boy, the uh, the latest Portland attack is really it's really hard stuff to watch. Um, but it uh, I, I think it shows just just where people are in this country right now. I normally don't do anecdote type stuff. I like to focus on on bigger on you know big picture stuff. But uh, you know this just it, it was so moving. Uh, watching what transpired last night in Portland that I, uh, I don't think that I can avoid focusing on it today. I'll try and link to Andy Ngo's thread on Twitter where he has all the videos, but I don't recommend watching them. Uh, basically what happened is somebody, apparently a tranny I'm hearing, uh, was getting mugged by some Antifa folks, which, you know, I would think that Antifa likes trannies, but I don't know, maybe not. Um, that person was getting mugged, and some guy in an old, what looked like an F-100, actually. Uh, real shame, because, you know, you don't really see F-100s anymore. You, you see F-150s, but the the F-100 is kind of a, uh, that's a lost truck. But anyway, he pulled over and said, you know, hey, you should, you should leave them alone. Uh, they didn't do anything or something like that. Um, and, that, you know, that person tried to run away, and they tackled her or him I'm not sure I don't I don't know what uh, uh, what they were transitioning from or to so I so I don't know what to call them <laughs> you know uh, but anyway that person uh, was tackled in the streets and was you know beat up a little bit or whatever um, and then this guy you know kind of sped off and then there's another video later where I, you can't really see what's going on but he swerves and crashes into a pole or something uh, wrecks his truck and then they pull him out of the truck they search through all the stuff, and they tell him to stay put, and then they come and, uh, you know, they tell him to sit down, and then he sits down, and then they come and uh, kick him in the head and knock him out, which, you know, uh, if you see somebody that get knocked out in, in one hit like that, um, that's normally a very bad sign. Like, that happens in movies, but that doesn't really happen, you know, in real life. You know, and that's the problem with these, you know, with these savages is they, you know, they watch violence on TV, um, and they don't really, you know, and they, you know, probably play it in games and stuff, and they think that life is a game. Um, they don't really understand that when you attack people, um, not only are you going to hurt them, but you're, you know, you very might, likely might kill them if you do something life-threatening, uh, like kick them in the head uh, and knock them out. Uh, because if he was knocked unconscious, he's probably got some kind of uh, brain injury now. Um, and then what did they do after he was knocked out? Um, thankfully, uh, you know, a whole mob of people didn't show up and just start kicking him in the head, you know, while he was unconscious. I didn't see that. Um, but some of these supposed antifa medics, um, while other people were shouting, you know, and cheering that this guy was knocked out, um, you know, one of their, quote, medics went up and was trying to, like, wake him up and was saying, oh, come on, man, wake up or something, you know, because I guess they didn't want murder on their hands and that that would make the movement look bad and, like, pouring water over his face and stuff. And it uh, seemed to me to be not very... Um, knowledgeable because if I see somebody who just gets knocked out like that the last thing I'm gonna do is touch them uh, because uh, you know I don't want to paralyze them or something or stir up their brain even more I mean that's just you, you just want to let them sit and call an ambulance and so I you know I, I'm really scared for that guy um, I don't think that he's going to um, he's not gonna be in good shape uh, for a long time let's just say hopefully he can recover at all um, but I'm sure he's gonna have a very very rough time ahead of him and, uh, you know, all I can say is that uh, it was not worth it, what he did. Whatever that person, whatever was happening to that person, he didn't need to go and get himself killed and wrecked and ruin his life over it. Um, I just, you know, perhaps it's because I, I grew up in an age uh, where um, people who do the right thing are not rewarded, but it's just, I, it, does, it would never occur to me to do that. You gotta pick your battles. You can't save everybody. And so even if you see someone who's getting attacked wrongly, um, you know, you just need to learn to let it go and to live to fight another day. Because if this guy is brain dead now or paralyzed for the rest of his life, who is he going to be able to help in the future? Nobody. And so, you know, that's my message to, to people about these Antifa folks is you can't screw around with them. Uh, or Black Lives Matter, whatever they're calling themselves now. Um, because, of course, this is the part of the ongoing Black Lives Matter riots, which, you know, <laughs> it's kind of funny now it's become a meme, but... Uh, Weren't these riots supposed to be over as soon as Trump pulled the Department of Homeland Security out of Portland? Weren't they just mad about Trump? Um, it's almost like they're mad about other stuff, too, and that not everything is about Trump. And so if there's riots going on, it might not necessarily be Trump's fault. So, yeah, the riots are still ongoing, and that's what this guy was caught up in. 
um, you know, these folks were out in the streets blocking traffic and stuff. And I have to say, um, unless you have a really, really good reason, you should not be driving around any of these cities at night. You know, even with uh, even if normal crime is not a big issue in your city, um, you never know when there's going to be uh, a violent Black Lives Matter mob roaming the streets looking uh, for somebody just to just to mess up and uh, and beat up and to take out their rage, you know, to try and uh, I guess uh, get some of those reparations uh, that we're hearing about from Chicago. You know, that's what Black Lives Matter said uh, about the looting there is that you know, hey, every time we take a Gucci bag. You know, all we're doing is taking back some of what was stolen from our ancestors. Now, uh, a lot of people are focusing rightfully on this guy, Kislev or Mark Kislev, who, you know, that sounds like a black name, but he looks, you know, he looks pretty white. He has scraggly hair, but he has very light skin and white features. So my guess is that he's at least half white. Not exactly the blackest black guy in the world. Uh, someone who probably has a bit of white privilege, you know, if you think about it works or worked as a security guard um, for uh, Star Security or something like that. And it's kind of funny because he was wearing his uniform and his vest to go out rioting. Somebody who apparently protects people for a living. Um, he's the one who delivered the knockout blow to this guy that may kill him uh, or may just maim him for life. Um, you know, kicked him in the head. While he was down on the ground submitting to them because, you know, he knew he was overpowered by the mob, they told him to kneel down on the ground. He got on the ground, and as soon as he got down, that's when they, they attacked him because, you know, he was, well, they literally kicked him while he was down um, because his, you know, he was a much easier target then. And then even after he was, you know, down on the ground, bleeding out, unresponsive, uh, people were just ransacking his things. And, you know, he was driving a very old truck. They haven't made a Ford F-100 since, I believe, 1983, um, thereabouts, or maybe it was 84 they quit. But it, the F-100 at the time was the most stripped-down Ford truck you could buy. It was the cheapest thing out there if you didn't have any money. And so this guy is driving a Ford F-100. Um, like 35 years after the last one rolled off the assembly line. So he clearly was not someone who was of means. Um, <laughs> yeah, he was, he was driving, uh, a, you know, probably one of the uh, one of the oldest and cheapest things you could find. Um, and he did not have nice things in his truck. He had like tools and uh, clothes and stuff. He actually, who knows? He might have been homeless. But, you know, I guess lashing out at this guy is, is their way of sticking it to their white oppressors. I mean, wasn't it Oprah that said even, uh, you know, even homeless white people uh, have more privilege than a black woman like Oprah, you know, who's a billionaire, if I'm not mistaken. And so what is, what is the response from the left on Twitter uh, to this whole incident? Are people shocked and appalled? Are they, you know, mourning uh, for this guy and saying, gee, that's terrible. It's so sad that somebody would do that to him. Um, you know, this isn't what Black Lives Matter is all about. No, they're saying, oh, he tried to run people over. You know, I, I, another total lie, just like everything they always say, because uh, they always lie about and try to smear anyone uh, who is victimized by the mob. And so there's no remorse for this, uh, for this good Samaritan who just tried to intervene to help uh, someone who's, being, who's already being attacked by the mob, who I believe uh, got, probably got beat up again after. Um, and uh, it was kind of funny, they were, you know, uh, uh, they were shouting at this person afterwards uh, that, uh, yeah, he got yeah, he got beat up because of you, because uh, he was trying to protect you, and so he tried to hurt us, and so we hurt him back. Um, and it was, it was really gross. You know, and this person was, you know, very upset and hyperventilating, whatever, and crying, you know, because obviously they felt very bad that this person they didn't even know uh, was just uh, likely scarred for life. And this whole group, um, nobody stepped forward to try and resolve the situation. They're all just okay with this. This is who the left is. They have no respect for anyone that gets in their way. We don't know the politics of this man. Um, you know, he's seemingly someone from Portland. He could very well be a left winger himself. It's not like left wingers don't drive beat up old trucks. It's not like a left winger wouldn't intervene uh, to, uh, to stop uh, some thugs beating up a tranny. But for whatever reason, uh, he did something to set them off. Um, and so they, you know, they beat him to a pulp. Um, they, uh, you know, they may have just about killed him. It definitely comes to the point of being attempted murder because they're a pack of savage animals. Um, they can't be reasoned with. It doesn't matter what your politics are. It doesn't matter if you capitulate to them. It doesn't matter if you submit entirely, just like he did. He, he admitted his defeat. 
he, he stood down, he got down on his knees, did everything they said, and they still tried to kill him. So your only, um, your only recourse is to avoid them at all costs. And then when they finally come into your neighborhood, like they're trying to in some of these suburban neighborhoods, uh, people need to stand up to them. That's where I would hope uh, these militia groups come in. So we haven't seen it too much so far, but I mean, you know, if they could just stand and, uh, you know, block the rioters from coming down residential streets and things uh, where they have, you know, good numbers, because obviously these militia folks don't really live in urban centers like Portland, uh, you know, let the cities burn, but, uh, you know, protect the, uh, the suburban areas. And I'm not saying that because I hate cities necessarily. Um, it's just impractical. Uh, you're not going to have all these, uh, all, a bunch of folks drive into Portland uh, to protect Portland from other people in Portland, it doesn't make any sense. So with that said, never talk about politics. Don't approach a mob. Um, if you see someone being attacked, just walk away. Let it happen unless you know, you're know you confident that you can handle the situation. But if there's an angry mob uh, attacking someone, uh, you know, unless it's someone that you, you know, really care about, it's not worth losing your life over it. Live to fight another day um, and, uh, you know, just just wait for a while. I think that uh, the mob's day of reckoning will come. Um, people who are who are this evil and mindless uh, in the way they go about their evil um, cannot be successful forever. I don't see them as a systemic threat uh, to society, but until the public at large recognizes them as the threat that they are, no one will be able to stand up against them without being persecuted. And so I'm afraid many more people are going to have to lose their lives um, before the evidence becomes so overwhelming uh, that the violent mob uh, truly is out to get you because the media refuses to carry these stories. So, you know, this sort of information has to spread through word of mouth, which thankfully is, is easier now than ever. Um, but, uh, but we're not quite there yet. Although, based on the poll that came out today from CNN, it's one poll, so I'm not, I didn't really want to do a whole video on it. It could be an outlier, but uh, versus the last time that this same poll came out, um, which I believe was in June, uh, Biden has lost like 10 points over Trump, and I don't think necessarily voting for Trump is what's going to uh, you know, it's going to protect people from Antifa, but what it does, what it might show, is that uh, the public approval for the riots is slipping. And if that's the case, if popular opinion, the popular will, can get, you know, can turn against the rioters, well, then there's going to be more tolerance for people standing up against them. You see, right now the media does not, will not mourn this man. Uh, they will probably run with the, if they report on this at all, they'll run with the Antifa narrative that he was trying to kill people and that they were just defending themselves, uh, you know, by uh, giving him a traumatic brain injury when he was uh, kneeling on the ground with his hands behind his back. It'll take, uh, you know, some more doing before Antifa is uh, is just totally toxic. Um, you know, they, they are, uh, you know, and Black Lives Matter. I really should stop saying Antifa. That's one thing I agree with Tim Poole on is that, you know, the Antifa term is kind of antiquated at this point because it's much broader than that. It's not the extreme far left communists anymore who are the ones doing this. It's ordinary people. These are ordinary Americans, people who live next door to you. That's, what, that's what's so scary about all of this Black Lives Matter stuff. Um, these are not crazy left wing loons. These are ordinary, you know, like uh, boilerplate uh, default liberals who would have, you know, willingly voted for Hillary Clinton. You know, the Antifa folks would never vote for someone like Hillary Clinton um, because they recognize uh, that she's a disgusting fraud. These folks, um, they don't really have any political beliefs. They're just animals. So with that said, I hope you all stay safe out there um, and watch your back. Uh, and if you gained anything of value to this video, I'd appreciate you clicking that like button and sharing this uh, video. If you haven't already, please do subscribe because I do upload every day and I'd hate to have you miss one. So I'll see folks back here tomorrow.